The Kevin jump is looking pretty rough. It's been raining, snowing, freezing, thawing, and just being winter. But all things considered, we have it pretty good here. And on a nice day like today, I can get these features running again in not too much time. But the wooden lip we built requires zero time to get running. And every time I perform a task like tuning up this berm, it makes me wonder how we'll keep this place running when I have five or six of them. And it just so happens that we do need another berm, or something. If you can make it to the landing of this iconic testament to sketchiness, there's a 90 degree turn, which of course requires heavy braking. You then need to sprint to make it up the next grade reversal, and that's not so efficient. But if we're gonna build a berm here, it's definitely gonna be made of wood. The only problem is, I've never built a wooden berm. The other Seth just built an incredible plywood berm on his wooden pump track. We could just copy his plans, but plywood won't have the traction we need with dirty tires. Our berm will need to be made from planks. Or in the case of our model, popsicle sticks. This is a good experiment for working out the bugs. And it's already apparent that we'll need to make some changes in the real version. We'll need to anchor it to the ground and find a secure way to fasten the planks, unless someone has a giant hot glue gun. One thing I did learn from building the model is that the radius of a berm increases as you move from the inside to the outside. Based on the measurements of a rough survey, I'm cutting the inside radius to 10 and half feet and the outside to 11 and half. This tape measure makes a much better compass than our old string method, since tape measures don't stretch. Whenever we cut these transitions, we're left with these seemingly useless offcuts. But with the addition of the table saw, we can easily rip them down and use them as stakes to anchor the berm to the ground with. Unlike a dirt berm, our wooden berm isn't going to curve from bottom to top. It'll be flat, kind of like a wall ride. But unlike a wall ride, it'll be angled at 45 degrees. So that's the angle I cut these supports at. To join the transitions, I'm simply lapping them and securing them together with lag screws. This won't need to be too strong since the berm will actually get its rigidity from the supports we put behind it. To keep the berm from sliding backwards, I'm hammering in the stakes we cut behind the lower radius. To keep the berm from tipping backwards, we're using the bigger stakes and securing them to the supports in the back. Our stake solution ended up working incredibly well, but I was about to run into some design errors that would end up making the project a little more difficult. So the planks would sit flat against the upper radius. I beveled the entire edge at 45 degrees. That's when the hacking and murdering began. 
I'm gonna have to do that part with the sawzall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just keep, just jump up to the next one. On future berm projects, I won't be overlapping the transitions, as it creates havoc when trying to get the planks to sit flat. Instead, I'll miter and scab them together so they can run in a straight line. Now that the tweakery and botchery is complete, we can install the planks. The planks did not go on as easily as they would on a bridge or a lip. This was another learning experience, and in the future, I'll lay out every last plank before securing any. But I still got it done, and they didn't look completely terrible. After a few finishing touches, our berm is complete. And it's solid. But we have yet to find out if it actually works. So it worked. <laughs> it worked, but the dendron's got to come out. I had to, I had to do an evasive maneuver for this rhododendron. As usual, I tried to get a little too woodsy and leave the rhododendron on the end. But for reasons which I hope are obvious, it had to come out. This berm feels amazing. Everything about it is fun, functional, and addictive. The only thing I would change about it dimensionally is to add another plank or two to the end to really blast off to the other side of the trail. I'm coming out of this berm so fast that I'm brake checking the next turn. And it needs a berm now too. But the real test is to see if we can make it from the first berm to the log jump without a pedal stroke. just barely made it, but that was with a brake check on the third turn. If we add a berm there, we'll have enough speed for a hip jump before the log. In the meantime, Berm Peak is finally starting to live up to its name. You can now white knuckle this berm and carry crazy speed down the trail. Well, if you can make it that far. Going next time. All right. Just gotta do it. And I guess my friends had better practice a little if they want to enjoy all the cool stuff we're building further down the trail. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.